Uh, buckle in. Uh, it's going to be a bumpy ride. You might be surprised by what happens here. If you've only listened to the public broadcast up to this point, this is big boy, big girl time. We take off the gloves here. All right. Our leadership trait of the week from this book right here. Gorillas in the mist. All right. So the leadership trait of the week is integrity. This trait is the backbone of the Patriot leader. Few Patriot leaders who lacked integrity have ever been ultimately successful. Integrity is demonstrated when the Patriot leader does the right thing despite personal cost. All right, we've got a fighting fitness, and this topic was brought to us today by Zach, the shipping owner. All right, what is the topic today, Zach? I'll let you dive into it and, and discuss it. That's a terrible idea, but the oh. topic for today is getting back into exercise. Okay. Uh, like I recently, I was, I'm sure well, some, some people may know, I'm not exactly the most active member of the Markle clan, uh, but I recently decided to get back into something. So I signed up to a local boxing gym. Uh, well, it's a whole combat MMA gym, but I, uh, is, a combat sports is the gym. Bo- Can I interrupt you? Go ahead. I just wanted to wonder, I was wondering if the boxing, cause it sounds like a natural progression from shipping to go into a boxing gym. You, fuck you. And this is the grad <laughs> program, so I can say that. Anyway. Uh, Jared, you want to explain a little bit about the difference in training uh, fast twitch muscles and slow twitch muscles? Yeah, well, slow twitch muscles, it takes a long, it, it's essentially the long haul, fast twitch or, or shorter. And um, it's just what it is. So, like, if you do uh, low weight but high rep training, you're doing the fast twitch muscles. If you do high weight, low rep training, then that's the slow twitch muscles. And both of them need to be trained in one in some way or another. A uh, question, or this is a question that I've gotten. People say, and it's when I, this, this question is basically a compilation of numerous questions. Have you been watching the presidential interviews, the campaign speeches, whatever? People say, oh, did you see what Biden said the other night? Did you see what Harris said the other night? Did you see it? Uh, No. Oh, well, how come, you know, you you seem to be, you want to be in tune and stuff. Oh, why aren't you listening to what the enemy has to say? Uh, Because I know what manure smells like and I know what it looks like. And I don't need to follow you into the barn to have you show me the shit. When we go back to the discussion about, well, you know, that's great for you, Paul, but I've got a teenage daughter and there's no way she's giving up her phone. Or my wife said, yeah, that's nice, but I'm not giving up my, you know, whatever. Uh, if that's the case, you need to sit down with your family and you need to talk about, to them about priorities. Yeah. Uh, and if they can't voluntarily, they can't psychologically handle the burden of being without their phones for one day, how in the hell are they going to psychologically shoulder the burden of a forced blackout, of a, a disaster, uh, of a crisis, of an emergency where their lives are turned upside down? When the storm comes in and there is no electricity, never mind phone service, how are they going to deal with that? All right, guys, welcome back to another bonus hour episode of Student of the Gun Radio. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a member of the grad program. (laughs) We've got a story from the daily, one of our favorite sources. Is this not one of our favorite sources of all time, Jared? Yeah, unfortunately, sometimes in order to get the truth, the unfiltered truth, you have to go overseas to these terrible websites that are just rife with freaking pop-up ads and garbage says kamala harris seen in miami protected by agent carrying assault rifle she vows to ban vp candidate kamala harris visited florida memorial university last thursday in miami and was protected by an assault rifle wielding secret service agent i assume the secret service actually gets real machine guns oh yeah they have select fire guns there's there's a two-pronged hypocrisy here number one the fact that she's the the democrat vice vice presidential candidate and the Democrat party and the Democrat voter base hates the Popo. Right. But of course they own. And what have we said for years? They who started the current war on American police. They're, Obama. They're, yeah. Their savior, comrade Barry. All right. And they've run with it for the last 
well, since 2012, basically, they've been running with this war on police. And uh, they hate the police when police are out there arresting their registered voters, Democrat rapists, Democrat drug dealers. You know, they, they don't like that. Democrat thieves and robbers. The, the police are the systemic racism. You can't just you can't just shoot people that are attacking you with a knife. From where does this money originate, Kamala? The first Indian American senator elected in the United States from a, a story in 2016. She went for, in four years. She underwent a a a, a, a race change. She went from being the first Indian American senator elected to the United States Senate to the first African American candidate for vice president. It's interesting. This year marks 50 years since President Lyndon B. Johnson, communist bag, uh, launched the war on poverty. In January 64, Johnson declared an unconditional war on American poverty. Since that time, the U.S. taxpayers, the taxpayers have spent, not the government, because the government doesn't make any money. The taxpayers have donated involuntarily $22 trillion in the war on poverty. 